Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is David Thomas, sales engineer for Parker Sporland. In this short video, you will learn how to size an expansion valve for a DOE AWEF compliant unit. Sizing these valves will require special considerations contrary to how expansion valves were sized prior to AWEF. Now, if I lost you already at DOE, don't worry. I'm going to explain everything you need to know about these systems and this unique valve sizing. Let's get started. AWEF is the annual walk-in energy factor mandated by the Department of Energy, or DOE. If the walk-in is 3,000 square feet or less, it must conform to this new standard. And this new standard will affect thermostatic expansion valve sizing and electric expansion valve sizing. How do you know when to consider the DOE AWEF standard? Well, it's for new applications or installations of a DOE AWEF compliant condensing unit, as well as replacing an old condensing unit with an AWEF compliant condensing unit. This standard requires OEMs to be more efficient. In a way they achieve compliance is by floating or lowering their head pressure settings. If the unit is medium temp, we've seen a range of 123 PSI to 150 PSI of a head pressure setting. If the unit is low temp, you could see a range of 100 PSI to 150 PSI. You may see other methods utilized to achieve compliance, but lowering head pressure is the least expensive and most common way for OEMs to meet the DOE AWEF standard. Here's the technical aspects of these changes. Compressor capacity and expansion valve capacity are reciprocals or opposites. In the winter, we get more compressor capacity and less expansion valve capacity. In the summer, we get less compressor capacity and more expansion valve capacity. The reduced expansion valve capacity in the winter is caused by less pressure drop across the valve. And with these lower head pressure settings, the traditionally sized valve may not have enough capacity, causing high superheat and low suction pressure, and ultimately the inability to reach or maintain box temperature. However, Sporlin has created sizing charts to ensure this doesn't happen. And here's a snapshot of those charts. We have evaluated valve performance at both winter and summer conditions, and we've taken the change in valve capacity into account to produce these charts. Keep in mind, if you're using a thermostatic expansion valve, you must use a balanced port valve for the wide head pressure range. Also notice that we group refrigerants together based on their similarities in thermodynamic qualities. For example, we group R404A and R507. The entire 407 family, A, C, and F, as well as R448A and R449A. First, size the unit as you normally would. So we aren't asking you to change anything about that process, only the expansion valve sizing. Now, once you've sized your system, all we need for the expansion valve sizing is refrigerant, saturated suction temperature, or SST, and system capacity in BTUs per hour. Now note that this is a system capacity at the AHRI 1250 industry standard, which is 105 degrees Fahrenheit condensing temperature and 96 degrees Fahrenheit liquid temperature. Let's run through an example. Say we are sizing an expansion valve for a R407A DOE AWEF compliant unit. It has a saturated suction temperature of plus 25 degrees Fahrenheit with a system capacity of 4,500 BTUs per hour. Remember, that's system capacity at the AHRI 1250 standard. The chart on the screen is for the balanced port R family valve, which has three types, R, ER, and SR. On the left-hand side of this chart, you'll see the various valve nominal capacities starting at a third of a ton, going all the way to 12 tons. For each capacity, we have a minimum and maximum column 
at specific saturated suction temperatures, starting at the top left-hand corner at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, running to the top right-hand corner at negative 30. With our saturated suction temperature at plus 25 degrees, we now want to look for valves that can fit the 4500 BTUs in between their min-max columns. With all this information, we can confidently select a half-ton R-valve. And our valve nomenclature would look like this, ERVE-half-C. We have taken all the guesswork out of it. It's different, but easy. In conclusion, the new DOE AWEF standard is changing the way we size the correct expansion valve. But we have compiled sizing charts for these units to make the change as seamless as possible. These sizing charts can be found on our website at sporlin.com under two different bulletins, bulletin 500-10-AWEF for TEVs and bulletin 500-100-AWEF for EEVs. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Sporlin's tech support or your local Sporland sales engineer. Thank you again for joining me today. Until next time, take care.